the aptly named Red Centre, the heart of Australia's outback. This okra soaked landscape is home to two of the most special pythons that this country has to offer. One of these species prefers the spinifex rich sand dunes that surround Uluru, the habitat providing a sufficient amount of reptiles that make up a large portion of this snake's diet. The other species, a more geographically restricted snake, prefers the rocky gorges and eucalypt lined creeks of the West and East McDonald Ranges. This here is a Woma python, such a hard to find snake across Australia. We found one here in the red centre on this trip. This is one of our biggest targets. They're such a special and unique snake to find. They're one of only two in the genus. They're endemic to Australia. They're only found here in Australia. One of our really, really iconic snakes that we get here. And the reason that they're so special is because they just look and act so different to all our other pythons here. So they're, they're a python, they're non-venomous, but you could easily mistake this for a venomous snake. They don't have those big, obvious heat sensing pits like all our other pythons do here in Australia. Um, they've got one that's actually up at the front of their jaw. The reason they don't have the deep pits is so that sand doesn't fill in, hot sand is not filling in while they're out hunting because these guys do a lot of hunting down burrows, eating other reptiles, venom snakes, dragons, monitors. They'll eat mammals as well. They'll climb up in trees, eat sleeping bearded dragons. It's just such an exciting snake to find and an awesome way to set off this trip here in the red center of Australia. This is the gem of Central Australia. This is the Bradley carpet python, Centralian carpet python, and such a special snake to find. They're such hard going that people come to find these snakes from all around the world. And we've managed to find one on our second night of looking out here. Incredibly lucky. And not only have we found one, it's a stunning, stunning individual. It's not fully grown. You'd call this sub-adult. These things get up to three meters long. So they're big snakes. They're eating small macropods that live in these, these gorges, the rock wallabies. They'll eat rats, other things like that, climb up the trees, eat birds. Such a versatile snake um, that are comfortable in trees, in the escarpment. And they are just so, so beautiful. The red and orange that runs right through these snakes is just so, on par with the country out here, the red sand, the red rocks, it just all lines up and for obvious reasons for camouflage, helping them blend in when they're sitting in ambush, waiting for things to come along. Wow. This is a snake where you can really see those heat sensing pits in those, in the jaw there, the lower jaw, the front of the face, compared to the Woma that we found first up where they don't have any of those visual heat sensing pits around the um, jaw there been a day over 40 degrees here and he's come down from the hot rock escarpment would have been deep away hiding come down closer to the water where it's a bit cooler these water holes gorges and creeks are like an oasis for life so that's where hunting is going to be the most successful for a snake like this a larger snake that's not going to be able to survive on small lizards gecko skinks it's stuff like that when they're young definitely but at this size he's going to be shifting to mammals and birds and larger food sources that are, are gonna keep him going. Oh, it's just such a good snake. One that I didn't, I honestly didn't think we'd find. We got so lucky finding the Woma. To find both in one trip is so surreal, such a special feeling. So we're just gonna leave this snake on for the night now, leave it to hunt, do its thing. What a special encounter and something I'm never, ever gonna forget.